You're listening to Clearview Today with Dr. Abadan Shah, the daily show that engages mind and heart for the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm Ryan Hill. I'm John Galantis. You can find us online by visiting clearviewtodayshow.com, or if you have any questions for Dr. Shah or suggestions for new topics, send us a text to 252-582-5028, or you can email us at contact at clearviewtodayshow.com. That's right. We want you guys to help us keep the conversation moving forward. You can do that by supporting the show. You can share it online with your friends and family. Leave us a good five-star review on iTunes or Spotify, anywhere you get your podcasting content from. We're going to leave a couple of links right there in the description box. So you can do just that. You got more and more intense as that went on. We're going to leave a couple links in the description box. Do just that. Do just that. Tuesday, Tuesday, Tuesday. Ryan and John on the radio. In the flash. You remember what radio shows used to do that? I wonder wonder if they still do that. I'm sure some do somewhere. (laughs) Hey, hey, hey. It's Clearview today. (laughs) Hold on one second. Yeah, there it is. There it is. It was a little delayed. Oh, it's good to be back, man. It's yeah. good to be back. You, you guys went on vacation. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, mm. <laughs> you seem unsure. Did I, didn't, we? I didn't see. Normally, Ellie's pretty good posting about posting pictures. pictures. I didn't see any pictures from the from the vacay. We left for vacay on Sunday. Like, we came back from the vacay on Monday. What? Here's what happened. <laughs> we went down to Emerald Isle. My sure. parents have a place down there. And so we were staying there. Uh, it's, a, it's a trailer. You know, it's like a little double wide. And so um, that's what you don't want to be in in a F5 tornado environment. Oh, no. Now, I don't, I'm just joking. I don't think it was an F5. But it was, uh, it was, it was a, it's storm season down mm. at the coast right now. You understand what I'm saying? This time of year from september to like october ish this time of year the coast be doing the most is be the coast be doing the most space ghost coast to coast and so <laughs> we were down <laughs> shout out to 90s kids so <laughs> we were down there right and so it was rainy it was miserable we got down there we were like well we, i doubt we'll see the beach but there's stuff to do on emerald isle sure, but yeah. that lasts like a day you know it's just a little tiny island so we went to dinner that night and the rain was picking up, the wind was picking up, and yeah. then as we got to dinner, everything was like deathly quiet. And I was like, oh. "Okay, this is this is fine." So we're in the restaurant, we're eating, um, and everybody in the restaurant's phone goes off at once. Oh, yeah. That that is one of my least favorite devices yeah, about cell phones. I don't like that at all because like even if you got it muted, it like comes uh, out oh, of yeah. the, the whole room, everybody's phone. I mean, it was like something out of a movie, and it was like, "Hey, tornado warning in the area," and. Like here in in North Carolina, like that happens. Mm -hmm. So I was just, I didn't think anything of it. I was just like, well, whatever. (laughs) That tornado's been spotted. It happens. Um, (laughs) And so we just go on about our meal as normal. Everybody ignores it, puts their phone away. And so the waitress comes by about 10 minutes later. We're sitting up against the window. They're like, hey, guys, um, we need to move y'all off the glass. There's a tornado heading like right for the restaurant. Yikes. So I was like, "Uh, well, that's kind of disconcerting but okay so we pick up our food we pick up our place they move everybody to the middle of the restaurant and then i was like i don't know what came over me i don't know if this is the white guy in me i don't know if this is the approaching middle-aged dad in me but i was like i reckon i'll step outside and just see (laughs) i think i'll just look at it i think i'll just go outside and see what i see so i go outside and i expect it to be like huge gale force winds Mm -hmm. like massive rain nothing deathly still deathly quiet which and is I, almost worse which was scarier i was like this is this is a eerie feeling yeah and like i could like raindrops were like dripping off the roof and i could hear it hit the ground and i was mm. like this is odd it was like someone hit mute on the world and then i heard I, I, this sounds like i'm making it up but i heard like a train in the distance yikes and i said let me get back inside <laughs> <laughs> let me get back inside this that adventurous spirit gone so <laughs> <laughs> we went back inside the restaurant, l- hunkered down. Nothing happened. Uh, like 30 minutes passed. We got two kids with us. They're wondering what's going on. They're trying to play. Everybody's stressed. Everybody's frustrated. So everything passes. We get back to the we get back to the house, yeah. which is just a double wide. And we're like, what do we do? Should we stay? And it's like, I mean, it's already passed. What's the odds that another one? As I say that, lightning strikes the ground, like just across the street. Boom! Like, I mean, it, it, I see it hit the, not our yard, but like across the street. And I was like, let's get off this island. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so we it just time to we go. just hoofed it right back. <laughs> we went down there on Sunday, Monday night. We were back in our beds. Well, I hate that I was vacation got cut well, short, but I'm glad you're. I'm glad you're fine. I'm yeah, glad you're yeah. Okay. It was. It was. It was no big deal. Storms on the coast are just. They're just a different breed. Yeah. You know, you just don't want to. I just. You don't want to play around here. In in like we're right on the Virginia border here at the at the studio, yeah. but um, it, it's you know by the time a storm gets here, it's not that big. Yeah, I mean, it can pretty, be bad. We're pretty far inland, but um. Yeah, it was fine. We did. We went to a bunch of places. We took the kids to Marvel's Museum. We took them all over like trampoline parks. We made a whole week out of it, so it was good. But nice. uh, we're good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I definitely was talking about. Well, maybe it's not that bad. And lightning just straight. It was like the Lord was saying, "Get off this island." It's time for you to go. And now, thank goodness we did because Wilmington's and uh, a lot of those surrounding areas around Carolina Beach saw a ton of terrible flooding after that. Ooh, so that was yikes. before. That was that was right before uh, Helene hit. Yikes! So glad we did that. Yeah. Write in and let us know your worst storm story. Have you yeah. ever had, had, have had to evacuate, had to hunker down in a restaurant <laughs> with two kids, like stressed, trying to figure out what's going on? Or have you ever just had to cut your vacation completely short? Write in and let us know, 252-582-5028, or you can visit us online at clearviewtodayshow.com. We'll be back after this. Hello, Clearview family. I'm Nicole. And I'm David. And we want to talk to you today about the Clearview app. You know, there are so many churches out there that put their sermons on YouTube and their announcements on Facebook and their prayer list on Periscope. I didn't even know Periscope was still functional. Oh, it's not. And that's why nobody can find their church's prayer list and nobody's prayers be getting answered. But here at Clearview, we believe in making our content as accessible as possible. That's right. Clearview produces so much content every single week, including Dr. Shaw's sermons, original music, a full online store, weekly prayer gatherings, and so much more. Not to mention the number one best-selling Christian talk show of all time. I don't know if that's accurate. Well, maybe not yet, but that's why we want people to download the app. If you're listening from the Triangle area, we encourage you to check out Clearview Church in person. But if not, you can still follow all of our content on the Clearview app. It's 100% free on the Apple Store and Google Play Store. And best of all, all of our content is right there in one convenient spot. Make sure you download the Clearview app today, and let's get back to the show. Welcome back to Clearview Today with Dr. Abadan Shah, the daily show that engages mind and heart for the gospel of Jesus Christ. You can visit us online at clearviewtodayshow.com, or if you have any questions or suggestions for new topics, send us a text to 252-582-5028. That's right. We're here once again in the Clearview Today studio with Dr. Abadan Shah, who's a PhD in New Testament textual criticism, professor at Carolina University, author, full-time pastor, and the host of today's show. Dr. Shah, we were talking about some inclement weather on the uh, <laughs> on the uh, top of the episode today, talking about when we went when I went to the beach a couple of weeks back and the tornado started coming straight for that restaurant. I don't know if you've ever done this, mm-hmm. but have you ever been like in a storm or or like people like, hey, a storm's coming? You're like, I just got to go outside and check. I just got to go outside and see it for myself. Uh, not me. Like like. <laughs> <laughs> like in India, but have you seen people do that where they're like, "I we just have gotta go monsoons look. in India." That's what I was about to ask. Now, monsoons are different than these hurricanes. Now we have typhoons, mm-hmm. which is <laughs> which is more of what we would think of as a hurricane, right? Cyclones, right. like tor- like yeah, like tornadoes and stuff. Typhoons, yeah, yeah typhoons, cyclones. There, I don't know what the difference is between hurricanes and cyclones. Maybe somebody can look it yeah, up. I, can, I, can look I, I did that research years ago, but I forgot now. But yeah, we have cyclones, mm. and they devastate. Like like what you're seeing here in Western North Carolina, and Georgia, and South Carolina, and parts of Florida, Tennessee, Virginia. I mean, that's that's cyclone that's stuff. A cyclone. So wow. um, a, a monsoon causes hurricanes monsoons are patterns of wind and rain that span huge continents and stuff right so, so what's the difference between a hurricane and a cyclone so then? a hurricane because see a, like in places like bangladesh uh-huh. i mean they are they just have to prepare for a cyclone yeah it's every year this is the same it says they're the same, the same, same yeah the national the national oceans in oaa i don't know what the a's are for but it says that hurricanes and typhoons are the same pattern, the same weather and phenomenon, which are tropical cyclones. Mm, okay. So I guess so they're the cyclones. Yeah. So mm-hmm. a cyclone can either be referred to as a hurricane or a, a typhoon. A typhoon. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, which one do we prefer? Uh, typhoon <laughs> sounds 
pretty cool. Typhoon you know sounds kind of cool, yeah. I, I don't prefer either of them. Yeah, I know. I was going to say. I was <laughs> yeah, going to say. True. Given the choice, I guess fair weather would Especially be the Especially right now. That, things, that was a they, trick question. Yeah. That was a trick question. They, I prefer sunny skies. Yeah, I do, yeah, too. I, do I, too. I prefer no uh, no inclement weather over yeah. here at the Clearview yeah. Today studio. We've yeah. had enough for a while. Yeah. Our hearts are broken for people to the west of our state, uh, western part of our state, and not just there, but also, um, you know, South Carolina. Uh, this is, we used to live very close to Anderson, mm-hmm. South Carolina. Uh, that's our old stomping grounds, Anderson, Spartanburg, Greenville, um, and then, of course, Tacoa, Georgia. But Tacoa, that area is okay, but yeah. further up pretty bad we yeah. talked we talked a lot yesterday about the um about the devastation that hurricane helena's caused and we just kind of wanted to continue that discussion because there's still a lot left to do and it feels like the only people talking about it are us and when i say us i don't mean the three of us around this table but just us in this area mm-hmm. yeah the, the further out you start looking i don't see this happening very much i'm, I'm kind of on the internet i'm looking on reddit i'm looking on other f- internet forums and i don't see a lot of discussion unless it's coming from the people who are directly affected yeah, right you yeah. know I, I found it very interesting that there are a lot of people who are uh you know are talking about it but then there are people who are just completely oblivious to it mm-hmm. or they they'll just don't talk about it it's like why not why yeah. are we not saying anything about that right and maybe it's just the media yeah the media has been very biased in this situation uh finally after a week late they're they're saying something about it, right? And my yeah. question is, why? Do you so know, long? week is too long. Mm-hmm. Yeah, too long. It's much too long. When I, you are stuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, there was a point where after Hurricane Katrina, George Bush showed up in New Orleans three days mm-hmm. after the hur- after everything settled. Yeah, he was torn apart for that. I re- I remember there being a lot of discussion. I think that was in like 2005. I was in middle school, but I remember people being like, where's the president? Why isn't he here? Mm-hmm. I don't think Biden has still set foot on. I mean, maybe by the time this airs. Yeah, he has now. But, but uh, you know, th- the response should have been immediate. Right. Because, uh, yeah, her, Katrina was bad. Yeah. Very bad. But this, what people are saying, and I'm not, I'm not talking about like us or me. These are Weather Channel people saying, oh, this is much worse. This is terrible. Yeah, yeah this, this is, is really worse. terrible. Yeah, because I feel like life has, you know, relatively resumed in in New Orleans. I mean, I feel like they're kind of back to, you know, at least, at least able to function. Yeah. But Western North Carolina, granted, this just happened, but still, I mean, they're going to be rebuilding for... Yeah, the foreseeable future. There was a lot of discussion last week because the handling of this is not, um, and I, I get it. I get every single disaster or every time something like this happens, people will complain about the way things are handled. I, I completely understand that. But there's a lot of discussion talking about the Biden-Harris administration um, and the, their response saying that FEMA just doesn't have the funds. And yeah. I, there's a there's a situation that is truly unprecedented in this part of, of North Carolina and the country. And they're just saying, we don't have enough money to fix it, guys. We just don't. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> what That's kind not an of response option. is that? That's not. That's acceptable. not an option. Uh, you need to. You need to do whatever you can mm-hmm. to help these people. Um, I mean, th- some of the videos we watched of families struggling. Um, uh, we've seen moms talking about their little child uh, who got you know torn away from them. Yeah. Parents who who died. I mean, they saw them drifting away and never heard from them again yeah right i've seen videos thank goodness of people pulling each other out of the water right. I mean, it's this is heart breaking this is not happening halfway across the globe this is happening for us mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. five hours yes five right. hours to the west of us these are our friends yeah, yeah. these are our, our oh, yeah, friends we know that we've known for people years very well yes. mm-hmm. yeah it's 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 frustrating because this is coming up and and it's one of those things where this turns the discussion somewhere it doesn't need to go and what i mean by that is a lot of people are are really upset because fema doesn't have enough funds to make it through this hurricane season because of billions and billions being allocated to foreign aid yeah and so then instead of bringing that up which is a very legitimate thing to bring up people are so what you say we deserve it more it was like well I mean, it's our yeah, money. Of course, of course. <laughs> but at the same time, no, we're not saying that we shouldn't be sending foreign aid. We're saying it's a straw man argument. What we're saying is the money was there for that. Why is there no money here for this? Right. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it's very, <laughs> it's a very obvious different set of priorities. He made a he made a statement last week, and people on TikTok were blowing up about it, rightfully yeah. so. Where he was like, "Listen, it's up to the American people 
to fund this. Yeah, I'm I'm disappointed. I was like, what? I'm very dis- I mean, I'm disgusted with it. Yeah, that. yeah. Now here is uh, a, a live news report mm-hmm. happening. Where uh, Governor Brian Kemp of uh, Georgia is um, is talking about the damage from Hurricane Helene, mm-hmm. and next to him is uh, President uh, Trump, President Trump mm-hmm. uh, who is running for election, mm-hmm. and he's here. He's on the grounds. He's talking to people. He's meeting people, and um, it's it's um. Let's let's hear a few 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 seconds here if we can. We have lost thirty three of our fellow citizens as a, as a direct result of Hurricane Helene. But I'm here to tell you, in spite of such tragedy and heartbreak, in spite this is live, right? Of happening this right is now, live. Seen, this is live happening. There are many stories of hope and perseverance. Over the course of this past week, Marty and I traveled to Valdosta and Augusta and many communities in between. We spent time with linemen from all over the country who came to Georgia to help those in need and get their power back on. Now, we pray some of our own are down near uh, Anderson, mm-hmm, South mm-hmm. Carolina, which is right on the border of Georgia. You have Anderson, Livonia, Tacoa. Right. You know, but it's right there. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, some some of those linemen that he is referring to are, are, are people. Are, that we, are people. Yeah. Uh, we didn't send them. They went with the power company. Right. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. But gotcha. we know them. Gotcha. Yeah. We know who they are, and they're giving us sort of an update of what's happening. And every one of them, every one of them, says it's worse than you realize yeah mm. some of our people have been saying that too the people yeah. that we sent are they are they in are they in north carolina they stay in there they're not um, going down to georgia there are some people who work with a power company and all they're of course in uh, more in in south carolina got gotcha. you mm. it just happens that they were sent in that direction there are yeah. others who are sent towards the western north carolina mm-hmm. side gotcha uh, so people have been sent everywhere mm-hmm. but um uh, the people who have gone from our church, uh, they have gone, of course, Western North Carolina. We feel like we need to take care of these people yes, first. Yes, there are people in Florida taking care of those people. There are people in South Carolina doing what they need to do. We need to right. do something. For, because, face it, North Carolina has been worst hit. Yeah, yes. that's true. That's where the worst. that's where the most damage yeah. was uh, Most was yeah. damage has taken place. Mm-hmm. And it's been eerily silent from the... Uh, national from the federal and the state government yeah which should that should upset us i mean if this tragedy yeah. happens in our backyard and nobody's talking about it i mean that's obviously targeted that's well, obviously it's, it's intentional is what i mean yeah there's very yeah there's very very little accountability i, I saw something where it was said fema spent f- 640 million dollars on migrants alone not on yeah. any not right. on any disaster relief not on any sort of natural disaster or anything like that on migrants coming into the country and so because of that I mean, I truly believe them when they say, hey, oh, yeah. look, there's no money to help. I believe you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think you're telling I, the truth. I believe that you have spent the money incorrectly. Yeah, right. My, my response would be, find the money. Find it. Right. Find the money. You cannot just say, we just don't have it. Yeah. yeah. Find it. And you can't if say- If you're loaning billions and trillions of dollars of money that we don't have, find that money. Yeah. And find it. And, and it, it can't be, well, we're going to find it. The American people are going to pull together. It's like, bro, you saw to it that we don't have no money. Right. We right. used to have money when yeah. the economy was good, but you- you you uh you, you killed that, that. Yeah. yeah so we, we, we have no really money. want four more years of this and i would say no, <laughs> no uh, yeah I absolutely can't. not <laughs> this. I, I don't know that we could survive it no. there's uh, you know you mentioned something about there's there's intentional silences and i'm i'm seeing reports and people are putting on twitter that they've there are medical teams trying to ac- access places like burnsville and the black mountains and their authorities there are actually threatening arrest like that, they they will not let them into hell that is insane to me yeah yeah and again i ha- i have no first-hand information about that so this is something we just have to wait and see how much of this is coming out as true i don't know how how much of that is yeah it's a twitter post it's not a news I yeah mean, it's we don't not know a, for um, sure but if it is uh, and people are genuinely good people trying to help then yeah I, I can see bad people trying to get in and you know bad elements trying to rob and steal okay of course definitely please stop them uh, but if there are people just trying to help and they are perfectly capable of doing that mm-hmm. please True, and and there's a lot of there's a lot of people saying that hey, listen, you you should really be donating to the churches, and and the churches are the ones who are kind of distributing and sending their people in to help. There were other reports, and again, I, by the time you listen to this, these could be debunked or these could be confirmed. But there's other reports that the Red Cross is confiscating people's donations and then having the victims apply to receive them. Hmm. So like they're recovering, <laughs> they're either still trapped or they're out, and now they're trying to get their their. Um, their uh, what you call it? Not rations, but their 
The provisions. Yeah, their provisions, yeah. exactly. And they're having to apply for them through the Red Cross in, in order to get to me. them. That's crazy to me. Yeah. What is the... Re- I mean... Maybe that's not true. Maybe it's just hearsay. Maybe it's it's just unsubstantiated. Yeah, again, we don't know for sure at this point. Maybe by the time this airs, all that has been cleared up and has been debunked, as John just mentioned. Yeah, yeah. And I hope, I pray that this would be the case. But if it's not, man, if people are really genuinely trying to help and you're not helping. Yeah. Oh. There's a there's a um, there's a, a gentleman in our church who has a team in the area who's talking about they have a team down there, and they were told th- uh, that. When they tried to donate to the Red Cross, Red Cross told them take it back. And at the same time, they were the Red Cross was telling people in line that they had to apply so that they could verify. So I mean, again, all this stuff is people who are telling us stuff and, and writing into the show and saying, "Hey, I have a team. I've sent some guys down there, and this is what we're hearing." So I mean, maybe there's some truth. Maybe there's maybe some of it's just frustration bubbling over. Yeah. But I mean, there's a we lot to be frustrated sure. over. But the point is, the bedrock is that the the response that should be coming from from government is not there. Yeah. The coverage that should be coming from media is not there. Yeah, here. this is the time where pe- you know people do look to the government, and and it's like, okay, you want big government, you want to govern us, you want to rule us. Let's see how you do it. These are the times that matter, right. and and it's it's Abysmal. not surprising. Well, it's not surprising that you get disappointed yeah. time right. and time That's again. Right. We've seen some great, great videos. Maybe we can watch one, and then maybe President Trump will make some remarks. Yeah, sure. We can watch that in a second. Uh, but this is where um, uh, s- uh, some horses were used mm-hmm. because. Um, of course, the roads have been washed away. Uh, you know, ATVs cannot get in there. It's 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 tough terrain, and you have to take in supplies. So check this out. If you're listening on the radio, it's people literally dr- like riding horses through flooding waters. Yeah. Look at those boulders. I mean, that's, those, yeah, those that's are huge. They're portions huge. of the wow. road, okay, that have been torn to pieces. And the text is saying, hey, listen, don't comply. Don't uh, bow down. If you want to help, get out there and help. Yeah. Don't let them stop you from coming in and helping. No federal help, first hand knowledge. Wow. 50% of more is being done by average Joe. And that's supposedly uh, Old Fort, North Carolina. Where is Old Fort, North Carolina? Uh, I mean, that's. You want to look that up? That's. Uh, I would love to know because these are small communities that we don't know about. We know about Asheville. We yeah. know about Boone, Chimney Rock, uh, Chimney like Rock. That. I mean, these are these are um, you know names that we know. But Old Fort, I, I don't know where that is. It's near Black Mountain. Okay, okay, and that Black Mountain was hard hit. Yeah, oh yeah. So very much so. This is this is an important just place. outside of Asheville. Just outside Asheville. Okay, okay. okay. Yeah, very uh, west. This is another one. This is this is a sad one. I, I saw this and it was just like. Uh, hurt my heart just to see that because this man's lawn or maybe say it's, it's a venue i don't know for sure what exactly this is but it says the first video was shot september 21st to give you an idea what my backyard used to be mm. the next stills were taken september 28th the morning after as the waters receded so i mean this looks like a po- the before shot looks like a postcard it looks it's got yeah. the sun well, wait till you see the rest the of it it's, it's just unbelievable yeah it's beautiful Everywhere. Wow. Beautiful wow. roses. Wow. Beautiful lawn. I mean, that looks like a million dollar home. Gorgeous rock patio. And I've been to some of these kind of homes. Uh huh. It's, um, um, it's so green. So beautiful. Yeah, it's yeah, right at sunset. Beautiful. Yeah. But now you see things change and it's radical. Yeah. Look there at that. Is. Gone. Yeah. Gone. Seven days wow. later, it's nothing but rubble. Trees are. That I mean, it looks like, it looks like a bomb gone. went off. Yeah. yeah, it does. It's gone. It just look. It looks like wilderness. Yeah, yeah. It looks like. Look at that. <laughs> Gosh, those rocks, those boulders. I mean, that's somebody's that's home. Good. Yeah, that's somebody's home. This is that thing when you see it, it's like, well, it's nature, but yeah. it's not. There was a it's home not, there. Was there a was backyard. someone's life. That's right. Now check this out. President Trump is uh, speaking here now, along with uh, Governor Kemp, talking to. The people about what happened in Georgia and what needs to happen. Some of them are looking back 20 This is live now. We'll switch back over to a live view. I want to thank the governor and everybody for having uh, put out to the extent that they've had to, and it's uh, really incredible. The uh, 
Some of the people that we uh, met just now, Congressman Rick Allen, terrific person, Speaker of the Georgia House, John Burns, who's here, former Congressman Doug Collins. Where's Doug Collins? Is he around here? Doug Collins. What a nice guy he is. Oh, Doug, I haven't seen you in so long. You haven't changed. You look good. You look better, actually, if you want to. State Senator Max Burns, who's here, and District Attorney Bobby Christine. And we want to thank you, but we want to thank the people that are working so hard. And we're here in Evans, Georgia, to express our support, our love, and our prayers. And uh, all of the communities are suffering. It's not even believable when you look and you see the kind of suffering that's going on right now. But one of the biggest, uh, I guess, question marks is the fact that there's so many people missing. I've never seen anything where so many, the numbers are so large of, of those that are missing, Governor, right? So that's uh, something that hopefully they'll be found and they'll be found very healthy, but uh, it never looks great. It never looks great. Our hearts break for the more than 200 American families who have lost their lives already. Officially, 200, and uh, that number, unfortunately, is going to be going up. It's uh, one of the deadliest storms in American history. More than two dozen Georgians have died, including a 27-year-old mother and her two precious babies who lived mm -hmm. not very far from the from McDuffie County. And uh, father, a lot of people knew these people. They're great. That's a good point. I don't know if we've talked about right how many deaths overall from Helene in yeah. North loss. Carolina. Mm -hmm. Must be almost unbearable. Don't know how you can even take it. Uh, the loved ones all over, all over your county, all over your state, and all over a lot of other states. You have Florida. Think of it, you have Virginia, you have South Carolina, you have Alabama, North Carolina, maybe hit the worst. North Carolina yeah. is so bad. I want to thank uh, Elon Musk, by the way, for his quick action with Starlink. He supplied uh, a lot of equipment to the governor, to Georgia, and to North Carolina in particular. And he acted very, very quickly. They needed communication. There was no communication. The poles are down, the wires are down. And he acted really, really quickly. I, in fact, I called him and I was getting thank you notices already from North Carolina and Georgia, and I wasn't off the phone with him. So I don't know what the hell he's, I guess he's got some kind of a, a little special deal going. He works, he works pretty fast, I'll tell you, but he's been great. And uh, Larry Ellison made a very big contribution and a friend of the governor's and mine is right here, Steve Whitcoff, who also made a very big contribution. Steve, we appreciate it very so much. Thank you. I mean, for Elon Musk to have you know jumped on this mm -hmm. and done what he had to do, I think that is very commendable. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know? yeah, I mean, communication is our lifeline mm -hmm. to be able to tell the world what's happening, to be a call out for help. You know, when you lose that, and and when you go into the mountains, I've been there. I've hiked into the mountains before. Uh, I've hiked uh, with groups. I've hiked with just one other person, and I mean, you go on and on. Oh yeah. I mean, you you see. A hilltop far away, and you think, oh, yeah, I'll be there in 15 no, minutes. No, no way. <laughs> Two hours later, you're still not there. Yeah, you'll be there yeah. at the end of the day if yeah. you're lucky. Oh, yeah, and you're tired, you're exhausted. Now, imagine people like this who are hungry, tired, uh, their spirits are broken, having to march through uh, this, this, you know, rearranged terrain. Yeah, they just survived <laughs> yes. the storm, yeah. Yes, and the, the terrain is nothing but rocks and boulders and all of that. I mean, can you imagine? Yeah. Can you imagine yeah. the, the toll, the stress, the mental, physical, emotional fatigue? Yeah. Yeah. We might be we might be a little short on time, but one thing I did want to mention because you mentioned uh, Elon Musk and, and his quick response, and that's one of the key things that I've learned about leadership from you and from working here at Clearview that I pe think people don't talk about leadership is the speed. You have to act. There are times yes, where you yeah. have to act. Yes, yeah. And sometimes it's little things like like we're sitting in service and something goes wrong, like the screens black out or the power and people will just kind of stand around. And one of the things I learned from you is if you're a leader, you get up and you move. That's right. You don't have to like like there are times where things will go wrong and everybody's aware. I don't have a plan, but I'm up and I'm moving. Right. You know what I mean? And uh, I, I, uh, you formulate a plan as you go. Right. Well, I mean, look at it. President Trump is over here. He's already uh, on the ground. He's he's talking. He's taking questions. I mean, let's listen to some of those things. It's great. No, no, no. It's great. Now we work together. We've always worked together very well, very really well. It's it's top. Yes. 
Yeah, of course they are. It's been a, a terrible response from the White House. Uh, they're missing a billion dollars that was used for another purpose. Yeah. And nobody's seen anything like that. Now, from that standpoint, it's been terrible. Say it. I'm not thinking about voters right now. I'm thinking about lives. And to be honest, it's uh, much bigger than anything else. But we're thinking about lives. A lot of lives lost. A lot of people missing. And uh, that's what I'd be focused on right now. That's a great quick, answer. Yeah, that is. And look how answer. quick they were with that uh, lower third, by the way. That was that was pretty cool. No, it's not. It's uh, inflation has uh, devastated our economy. It's one of the big mm. problems we have. And on jobs, we have uh, the illegals have taken more jobs than anybody else. You have uh, illegals coming in and they're taking the jobs. And when you look at the numbers from that standpoint, it's a shame. We have to get the jobs to the people that have lived here for a long time and they're uh, great, great citizens of our country. But mm. when you look at the job numbers, they just came out and then you look at who's getting the jobs. And it's been uh, very unfortunate from that standpoint. Uh, you have illegal, you have the migrants, you're reading about it. Now a lot of the money that was supposed to go to Georgia and supposed to go to North Carolina and all of the others is going and has gone already. It's been gone for people that came into the country illegally. See, that, that right there mm -hmm. is, is a big part of the problem. Yeah, yeah, true. You're talking about no money and that American people need to help? No. Yeah, government needs to help. Yeah. And this is the time the government should help. That's right. And it's not happening. Yeah. It's not happening. You you talk all the time year round, you know, twenty four seven about how you should tr we should trust you and we should listen to you and we should rely on you. Well, there's people relying on you right now. Now's yeah. the time. That's right. Right. If you'd like to help out the victims of Hurricane Helene, there's lots of ways to do that. One is by partnering with organizations like Baptist on Mission or mm -hmm. Samaritan's Purse, organizations that are helping on the ground. If you're still searching for ways to do that, you can contact us here at the Clearview Today Show, and we would love to put you in touch with entities that are operating there, local churches, local relief organizations, uh, to make your make your gifts uh make the impact that they need to make. Um, you can contact us at 252-582-5028 or visit us online at clearviewtodayshow.com. Don't forget, you can partner with us financially on that same website. Scroll to the bottom, click that donate button, and let us know it's coming from our Clearview Today Show family. And if you want any of those donations that you make to go to the hurricane relief, you can put that in the... In the, um, in the memo the, field. Yes, in the, the memo field. Mm -hmm. yep, yep, mm -hmm. just mark that it's for the NC flood relief and we will get, that, get those donations where they need to go. That's right. Make sure you guys join us for tomorrow's episode. Lots of great content coming your way the rest of this week. We love you guys. We'll see you tomorrow on Clearview Today.